Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So I'll start with this video with uh, just a tiny bit of an intro, so bear with me. I will show the tools, just wait, just a little bit of an intro. I want to put in perspective why, or, or I want to showcase the direction from which I will I am looking at these tools, right? And from which I am evaluating these new tools that Vira is coming up with. And the, the, the basics are, for a while now, I wanted to do a video bashing V-Ray and just saying that it sucks because it you need to pay for it as an enthusiast and you need to pay for it as a student. You need to pay for it as a teacher. You know, it, you need to pay for it even if you're not making money from it, right? And if we compare it to Blender's cycles, for instance, the final output, the quality of the final output is not necessarily better, right? So then, then there, there is this kind of a disconnect. Why do you need to pay for one and the other one is free? Then just choose the, the, the free one, right? So I wanted to do a video just bashing, you know, V-Ray and saying that this is bad. Then I started looking into it and started noticing what V-Ray or what Chaos Group are doing with V-Ray, right? Uh, since V-Ray 5 came out, what kind of updates they had and what kind of um, additional tools they introduced. And none of those tools uh, do anything to increase the quality. There are some that increase the functionality, of course, yes, but most of the biggest moves in terms of updating is decrease in time spent needed to produce a pretty looking image, right? They're, they're going to, uh, towards this one click, nice render type of approach, which I think is kind of smart because, um, well, architects are really using V-Ray. A lot of architects are using V-Ray, right? And just having stuff super convenient, right? Like adding trees and so on, just having it super convenient uh, makes it so that um, you, you're not spending too much time doing visuals and no one wants to spend time, you know, adding textures and so on. So, of course, then if one program is more convenient than the other and it's saving time and time is money, then, of course, you know, architects, for instance, are going to purchase V-Ray. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'm sorry. So... Vera is going towards the convenience route. And these two updates, I am looking at them uh, through the prism of how convenient they are to me. So enough about that. And let's just jump into it right here. And I'm going to show you those two, two main things, right? So let's just quickly do some sort of a box just so that we have, we have a sense of scale. Right, so I'll just do a box that's five meters by, um, let's go for three meters. Let's go for four meter high box. No, four meters is too much. Three meters as well, whoops. And maybe it's not actually five meters, maybe it's 10, so I'll just scale it up by two, right? A long box, that's it. This is gonna be our building, I guess. Right, and then I'll just do a quick little landscape for it. Just a surface, a single surface. The size doesn't matter, right? <clears throat> Something like that. I'll quick, quickly rebuild the surface to have like five by five points, let's say. F10, and then I will just lift up a few of those like that, and maybe some of these get lift up as well. Just basically to mess up the horizon line and so that the horizon line is not, not super weird and super funky. I'll just take the corner points, push them down. Yeah, this should be good enough, right? So, so we have a very simplistic um, scene. If I just click on the render button. Actually, let's go for RTX Interactive. <clears throat> if I just click for, for rendering, right? This is how it looks. Horrible, right? So now, uh, this is where I can begin talking about the convenience of actually taking this 
and making it nice, making it look nice, right? So first thing is an old thing. This, this is not going to be like the first thing that I'm going to show you or first two things that I'm going to show you are going to be old updates. And the last two things that I'm going to show you are going to be the newest ones, right? So just bear with me. First thing is the, the, the Chaos Cosmos. So Chaos Cosmos is this library, right? That you get for free. Well, for free. You buy V-Ray and together with it, you get all of the models that come with Chaos Cosmos. And it's a library that keeps being updated and keeps getting added to right so you have vegetation and you have people and so on and you can easily download them i will talk about the 3d models in just a second but the nice thing that i want to kind of show is these hdris first right so you can get let's say day hdri for this scene and i'm just going to choose whatever you know um, let's download one that i don't have let's say this sure day 006 Click the download button, it downloads, import it, and now it sits inside of my V-Ray Asset Editor, right, right here under textures, day 006, which means that if I, for instance, create a dome light right here, dome light and I just click cancel to not give the dome light any uh, what's the name any I'm, I'm gonna get there the textures any textures uh, so it just creates a dome light that is completely empty right basically if I expand this you can see here it just has white color and no texture and what I can do with it then is I can take this day six texture right click on it, copy, go to back to my lights to dome light, right click on this checker box and paste as copy, right? So now my downloaded HDRI is going to be used as my dome light texture. So then if I click on the render button right here, I can get a white dot <laughs> just just a white screen that's because my camera is freaking out so i'll just here change my camera exposure value to something you know closer to like 14 or maybe 15 something like that just so that it's uh, not over bright and you can see that i have um i have a sky here and I have some lighting going on right so that's one thing um a, a pretty nice nice and quick way of how to add lighting to your scene and also you're able to control the direction of it by just rotating the the arrow of the dome light which is really nice but so that's one convenient thing second convenient thing is back to um back, back to chaos cloud right chaos cosmos or not even that um or yeah sorry that back to chaos cosmos talking about um 3d models right so getting some 3d models in in here right so for instance oh no i next to this building i need some sort of a furniture piece that is a chair right I can get any of these chairs really quickly into my model, right? I just click on download and it just <clears throat> loads it in, import it, snap it to here, bam, I have a chair right there, right? Easy, quick, really nice. And also if I hit render, let's just give it a, a second to start rendering. And I zoom into the chair. Well, first of all, it's floating in the air, so I need to actually move it down. But if you look kind of, if you look closely, the chair has really good quality. Like all of the materials are there and everything is super, super neat and dandy. So that is fast. I don't need to deal with meshes and, and anything like that. I can just grab a chair and import it right so that's 
second convenient thing. Now let's actually move to the body of the video, the most important thing about the video. And that is the two updates that came out. Okay, let me stop this for a second. The update number one that I find to be very, very, very interesting. And for that, I will need to actually, how do we do this? Um, trim, let's use this to trim the inside surface like that. There we go. I just need a, a hole in that surface. So the first uh, thing that came out is this, uh, where is it? Make scatter host from the selection, scatter tool. Not in Grasshopper, but in V-Ray. Uh, straight up in Rhino's user interface. That is very important and very good to have. So the way it works, and I'll, I'll show you, of course, the way it works is you need a host. So some sort of a surface or geometry on which other geometry is going to be placed. Pair this with Chaos Cosmos and you have yourselves a treat, right? So imagine this, I have the surface. I click on the scatter button. Where is it? There it is. Make scatter host from the selection. Bam. That's it. Nothing initially nothing changed you know it's, it's the same thing but now if i go to the very asset editor and i go to objects i can here see scatter right that's that's my um that's basically like a layer we can call it layer that's attached on top of this right now my scatter doesn't have any references right so it doesn't show anything so let's actually give them give it some references for that i will go to chaos cosmos and I'll probably, let's create a quick forest. Let's do a forest, because forests are usually really hard to do, right? So I'll go for, <clears throat> sorry, vegetation, trees, and I'll download, or maybe I'll, I'll just use the ones that I have downloaded. Yeah, let's just use some pine trees, right? So one pine here. Oh, this is a nice one as well. That pine there. Let's go back. Um, Let's do three pines, four pines, five pines. Let's do a pine tree forest. Sure, why not, right? So that I can just now <clears throat> in my scatter view, by the way, I do need them to be somewhere on the screen so that I can actually select them, but that's fine. I will just have them here. So in my scatter, mode, I can add guests like that. And I can just select all of these five pine trees, hit enter, right? And now you can see there's a crap ton of boxes <laughs> that are added. These are basically the bounding boxes for where the trees are going to be. Let's render it out, you know, just to see what's going to happen. I'm, I'm actually interested to see the density that it's going to come up with. So it's uploading textures and so on. There we go. There's our insane density of pine trees. And you can't really see it. It takes so long to, to render out, I guess. Just a second. I need to change exposure value. Let's do something like 14 to make it a little bit brighter. But this is basically like a really, really intense pine forest. So now we need to, you know, change it up a notch. Find values that work. So coming back here to um, the scatter tool, I can expand this and I can start looking at what it is that it does, right? So here we have the density. This is by the way, when you hover your mouse over the inputs, it just shows what they do, which is super helpful. So density is just how many elements do you um, do you want to have per square meter, right? Sure, one, we, we can do that. Seed is just random seed, right? Randomizing the seed, sure. So in terms of the pine trees, I will just, just say I want to have 0.1. So every 10 square meters, there is one. Does it work that way? Yes, it should work that way. Every 10 square meters, there's one pine tree. 
that is added right which is still really intense <laughs> still really hard to to kind of find a, 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 a good not footing but a good view in it so let's say 0.02 or 0.05 twice less all right something like this so now we're in the middle let me just let it run for a second now we're in the middle of a of a forest right with a bunch of pine trees here so that's really really helpful i think i'll do like even less 0 0.02 for now uh, later we can easily come back and increase it <clears throat> so that's one thing then um the axis um basically is do you want the pine trees to always go uh, look straight up or do you want them to follow the curvature of the ground right so in this case i can say um it needs to be um it it needs to align with all of the faces of the mesh or it needs to be facing up i'll, I'll keep it as facing up orientation oh wait sorry axis filter oh that's my bad Access filter is not that. Access filter is basically on which surface do you add the pine trees, right? So in this case, um, I'm saying that to add the pine trees only on the surfaces that are facing upwards. Uh, if I choose all faces, in this case, it, it won't change because this is a landscape. But if you have, let's say, a sphere, then in this case, it would add pine trees to the whole sphere, right? And with the previous version, it would add pine trees only on the top of the sphere, right? Then orientation is the one where you can change the direction of the pine trees according to the, um, to the curvature of the land. So you can see that these trunks right here are changing direction. I don't think that's necessary, so I'll just keep it whirled up. Collision detection basically just makes sure that the bounding boxes don't collide between the trees uh, we don't really care about that trees can collide that's fine um then here this is just a preview would you like to see it as the bounding box or like what um and here the very important thing is the preview uh percentage right so how many boxes if we have let's say 100 trees it's in this case, it's going to show 100 trees, right? But you can change the amount of preview boxes on this on the screen just so that it doesn't overwhelm you, right? Which is nice. And then here is just randomization options, right? Which are fine, I guess. We can we can work with those. But uh, the the main thing is the random um, scaling factors because you always want to rotate the trees randomly with 360 degrees so i'm not going to mess up with that but the scaling you can mess mess around with it so let's say here i can do 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 right really large difference between the trees and i can increase the amount of trees let's say twice let's just find a nice angle something like uh, 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 back 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 something like that and we start seeing an actual you know pine forest coming coming along so that's one thing another thing is let me stop the render for a bit another thing is that you can actually add a second scatter and i will do that by taking this surface and i'll just copy the surface up i wonder if that's gonna copy the scatter as well just just but by, by a tiny fraction let's just investigate does it copy the scatter no it doesn't which is strange it should disconnect okay so it's not ideal it's not an ideal tool right but i will um take the apologies i will take the the, the scatter off from the copied surface i guess uh, never mind that's not gonna work 
So instead, I remember now, the tool here that says scatter, there's also another tool that says remove scatter, right? So if I right click on this while having the top surface selected, I can remove the scatter from this while keeping the scatter on the bottom surface. The reason why I'm doing it here is because I can see some of the, um, how do you call it, roots, some of the roots sticking out. And in this case, by just lifting up the ground, uh, a second layer of ground above, uh, the roots will be hidden for these. That That's the, the only reason. And also, also, for this, I can have the forest floor scattered, right? So I can go back to my um, Chaos Cosmos thing, like tool, I guess. You call it tools, right? Uh, tool. And I can choose flowers, grass, and rocks. And I have a few of them already downloaded. And I'll just import, I guess, all of them. So that's one. That's two. That's a very small one. Uh, whatever. That's going to be three. Then we have some, some small ones. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, and nine, right? Really quick, nine different plants. And I'll just, <clears throat> I'll go back to my top surface and I'll apply a new scatter to it, just like that. So I now have uh, scatter number one. I'll just call it forest floor scatter. And for this, I will add guests, right? So right now I'll just add the, let, let's add the big ones. So these two, right? These are kind of big. No, this, this is the big one, right? So I will add, oops, forest floor scatter. There we go. I will add this as a guest, right? And I will say that its probabli probability of being scattered is l going to be lower than all other elements because it's so big right so i want fewer of these how much fewer i guess 0 0.33 so only like it's, it's going to be three times less apparent than the rest of the collection and then all of these forest floor scatter add guests all of these have probability of being scattered set to one you can see all of the boxes and in this case i think we could use more right we could use more of, of this stuff on the forest floor. So let's say our density is actually 10 elements per square meter, right? 10 elements. Let's press the render button. And let's just see. Let's just see what's, what's going to happen. Uh, by, by the way, it, it takes a, a, a little bit of time to, to actually start rendering. But once it goes, it goes. So here you can see, you know, some greenery popping up. And actually, I'm, I'm very curious what would happen if we go back and instead of CUDA cores, we use RTX cores. Would this still work? Feels like it should work, right? We'll see. We will see. Because if you have an RTX graphics card, yep, there we go. Works, works like a charm. If you have an RTX graphics card, it, it just renders like, like it's nothing, uh, this, this kind of stuff. So I have some, some, some geometry scattered, but it's not enough, right? So I can e immediately go back to, 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 to my scatter options, wherever they are, forest floor scatter. And here, I guess we just do a hundred, right? Hit that hundred and see see if this is going to work while this is doing it i can kind of check how much ram it's using just so that you know we're at 13 gigabytes so i mean a laptop could manage this 14 mm, okay we're, we're getting dangerously close to the 16 gigabytes oh never mind 14 gigabytes and we're Gucci. 
And this whole floor is now being scattered. And at this point, I almost don't need the ground texture, right? Which is crazy to me. Um, our view, though, could be a little bit adjusted. There we go. Something like this. Okay, so that is the main one of the two tools that I wanted to show you. I mean, how much time would you spend doing this on any other software? And here, keep in mind, I'm explaining everything. This is like 50 clicks to do all of it really quick. Um, next thing that I want to show you is actually something that I came, uh, came across accidentally. And it's if, if now I go here under volumetric environment and I turn on the volume fog and choose it to be environment fog and have the height set to be, I don't know, like three meters high, uh, higher. Because you can see that <laughs> now you can actually see it at three meters. So let's go for um, eight meters, I guess. And the distance, of course, needs to be much larger. So let's go for 100,000. No, 500,000. Yeah, around 500,000. If we go for that, right, there is this kind of a atmospheric fog going on and you can play around with its, with its color to get, you know, some sort of a nice little look to, to your scene, you know, adding that a little bit of a bizarre i guess or w w whatever you you might call it but I'm, I'm it's it's not about that uh the, the the main thing is if then i have some sort of a light source in there let's do let's do something very simple let's actually just do i'm gonna do a sphere right there definitely smaller sphere should, probably shouldn't do it while rendering. That is not the smartest thing to do. It's actually having a heart attack, but <laughs> so it doesn't doesn't mind me me doing all of this. But basically, I have I have a sphere here, right? And I can make it into a light source, right? So I'm going to translate it into a mesh light, convert to mesh light, right? So now it's going to shine light. There we go. Now it's shining light, right? I can go in here into settings. Remember that we have fog here, right? So let's actually make it very, very small. Very hard with so many menus. Let's just say that. But if we make it super small, Something like that. Nope, 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 nope. That's too small. Something like that. Perfect. And we go in here into the light settings and mesh light. We change this to like, let's go for a thousand. I don't know how bright it needs to be, but I'm just going to try a thousand. Right? We have a, a bright sphere. The problem, the problem that we have is that this sphere is not influencing the fog in any way shape or form right it's uh it's just glowing and nothing's happening right there's no no rays emitting from it no no glow that's reflected in the fog which is not great um here we can kind of change a few things here and there but there is never going to be a way or 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 previously there was never a way of how to influence the fog without actually making the fog super dense and i can show you how that looks like if i just delete a few zeros from here then you can see that there's a little bit of a glow around the around this sphere and if i zoom out actually from it further away One. There we go. And I, let's say, increase the... 
the intensity and let's just change the color of it so that we can we can see better there's basically going to be a little bit of a glow around it just due to you know the fog uh, eating up the the light and also scatter gi of course needs to be turned on for it uh, for it to work properly so yeah there there you can see a bit of a glow <laughs> but this this is not you know the, the solution doesn't work right because the fog is too intense uh now nothing you can't see anything right so instead we do we do normal fog and let's actually zoom out um to see the the building and we know that you know th there's there's that little sphere there you know it's still doing its thing and this is completely experimental so i'm not sure if this is going to work but basically here they've added effect atmospherics slider for the, the 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 mesh light not just the mesh light by the way for for any kind of light effect atmospherics i wonder if we increase this to 100 how would that behave right i'm waiting right so now with this increased to 100 you can see that there is a really apparent glow and actually let me just render out this area in general there is a glow around the sphere right without densifying the, the the fog so you finally can do atmospheric stuff without actually needing to be super kind of not conservative but um innovative with the fog and and your use of it you won't need to do photoshop work later on which is great right which is uh, in my opinion super so that's uh, that's that's the main thing right that's basically the step number two <laughs> in our um or, or or tool number two in this video which actually means that the video is coming to an end unfortunately these two super convenient tools well one is super convenient and the other one just makes it so that you don't need to do post-production work afterwards if you want to achieve this particular result this is something this is the direction at which i'm really happy that Vira is going towards because now i can still suggest Vira as a good tool for professionals and also for architecture students who don't want to spend a lot of time polishing their elements or not elements sorry polishing their models uh, or polishing their vis visualizations because with with V-Ray you can do it really fast all right one last thing um let's just take a look at god rays if it's possible to add them here right for this particular scene so and also i guess we can do an evening uh let's add the evening look to this right so just look how fast it is going to be to change this to evening i go to hdris i choose evening i already have one right so i just download or import it um i import it into the textures which is going to be sun 002 i copy it i go to my lights dome light and i just paste paste it here and that's it now this is going to once it stops recalculating it's going to be an evening scene <laughs> that's pretty cool isn't it? i mean come on come on come on that's pretty cool um and then here let's just see okay so dome light they still haven't added the what you call it i can do this they haven't added the, the the effect atmospherics slider here as they have done so for the mesh light so i guess we would need to create one more 
uh, one more light source, which I'm okay with, right? So we can just add one more, uh, let's say directional light source from here to here, let's say, or something like that, I guess. Bam. And let's let's look at it from from the front view. Zoom selected. Yeah, it's completely horizontal. We don't want that. That shouldn't be happening. So this guy needs to move up. No, 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 no. Only, only the arrow, please. It's very laggy for me, by the way. That's that's why I'm struggling <laughs> with this. Uh, rendering while recording is never fun. But basically, we have this. Uh, directional light as you can probably see and i just wonder if it's going to work with atmospherics right because we can turn off effect diffuse and effect specular and shadows and we can just have have it working with atmospherics right i think so and we can ramp this up to a hundred probably a hundred is a little bit too much well maybe if we change this to one now i'm just messing around <laughs> with it the video has been over for a while now <laughs> but you can see now with the directional light and at, uh, atmospherics being affected to a hundred there are indeed um like the, these stronger god rays that are being pushed right in into the camera and you can now change you know change these values and mess around with the color to to really really see them i just wait for it to actually calculate like that let's see shadows that should do the trick right yeah that that does the trick so you get these kind of very soft i don't even know if my my recording is picking it up but you get these really soft streaks of of uh, of shadow versus light maybe we can increase this a little bit just so that you can see and by a little bit i just increased it by 100 <laughs> just so that you can see right these streaks are the streaks that i'm talking about it's just that um, there is compression going on between my recording and what you're seeing so i do need to ramp up the, the the contrast so that you can actually see it i would never do this though but yeah that that is it i'm going to show the the image at the end of all of this of course of course i will but besides that we're done we're done so i really hope that you've found this like these two tools useful and you will give it a shot you'll try them out okay i'll see you in the next one later <laughs>